hey loves you welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to make this beautiful asymmetric neckline bubu dress so for this tutorial i'll be using three yards and the three yards i'll be folding it into two which is one and a half um on both sides and that one and a half will serve as the length of my dress and now I've gone ahead to fold it into two again the other way. And yeah, just do what you see me doing in this video. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to mark out my imaginary line. I'm just going to use this ruler and draw out a straight line and then cut it off. This is so that um, all my down part will be straight line. I don't want to be short, running short of fabric anyway. So I'm just going to trim it off to make sure that all of them are equally laid now the top is what i'll be using as my shoulder line the first thing i'm going to do is to mark out my shoulder measurement which is 8 inches 16 divided by 2 which is 8 inches and from there i am going to extend to my sleeve length which is 13 inches i'm going to mark out 13 inches for my sleeve length Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to come down by one inch at that 13 inches. And then I'm going to use three inches for my neck opening. And I'll be using one and a half inches for my back neck depth. Now I'm going to curve it out. I'm actually, I'm not going to um, draw out the front neck depth now i'm just going to do the back so now i'm going to connect my shoulder slanting to the tip of my neck opening now from the top i'm going to mark out 12 inches which is what i want to use for my armhole length and then i'm going to go ahead to mark out 16 inches for my waistline and then i'll go down by 9 inches for my hip line and now i'm going to extend the lines now remember this first one is my armhole length the other one is my waist and this one is my hip length so at the armhole length i'm going to impute my bust measurement my bust is 40 divided by 4 which is 10 and i'm going to add extra 4 inches this is depending on how large you want your bobo to be. Now my waist is 28, which is 7, and I added 4 inches to it. And my hip is also 40 plus 4 inches. That is 40 divided by 4, 10 plus 4 inches, which is 14. Now 4 inches is for ease. Exactly what I have at the hip line, I'm going to come to the full length and also add my 14 inches and then use my straight ruler to connect it from the hip line to the full length of the dress. Now, the next thing I'm going to be getting is my curve ruler and I'm going to be connecting my curve from my waistline to the hip line. And I'm also going to be using the same curve, place it in the best way that I can, and then connect it from the waist to the armhole length, which is what I used for my bust, bust line. Take the curve ruler aside and use your hand to smoothen out your curve. remember the measurements i use depends on how full you want your booboo to be if you want it fuller than mine then you can add more ease to it i'm going to come here and measure what i have there and then i'm going to go ahead and put it here which is about 22 inches now i'm going to use my ruler to run a straight line and this is my sleeve now what we're going to do is to go ahead and cut it off at this point at this point i'm going to tell you guys to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done that and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching if you have any confusion do drop a comment and then i'll answer you
now at the waistline i'm going to go ahead and give it a notch i'm just going to pinch the waistline and add a notch to the waistline because this is where my pocket will start from so you need to signify it open up your pattern and this is what you're having take out one piece for the back and then leave this second piece for the front now it is time for us to work on the front neckline remember it is an asymmetric so at one point i'm going to go down by eight inches you can do seven you can do six inches but as for me i want it to come down so i'm going to just do eight inches i'm going to use a straight ruler to bring it down and then i'm going to get my curve ruler and also use my curve ruler to connect it to the other point now this is what your asymmetric neckline looks like and yeah and uh, this is me okay i'm just going to reconfirm to be sure that i like the curve that i have and yeah after reconfirming i like it and it's matching so the next thing i'm going to do is to cut out this asymmetric neckline so now we're going to go ahead and cut out our neckline The next thing we're going to work on is the patch that we have in front. For the patch, I'm going to be using crepe fabric. This fabric is a remnant of a dress I meant for my clients. In the normal sense, if I was making the other design that I have in the picture, I would have used something bigger than this. But because my crepe fabric is just little, I'm going to manage this and I'm going to make a design that is kind of different from the one in the picture now i'm using a length 26 i'm just going to go ahead and mark out my length 26 i'm going to extend the line and then i'm going to retrim it off the essence of this trimming is to have a rectangle i'm trying to get a 26 26 by whatever width i have um rectangle if i was making the dress in the in my picture then i'll be using a 26 by 16 inches rectangle but because what i have here is not up to that i'm just going to manage what i have i went ahead to notify the back of my dress that place that i drew an x is the back of my fabric so i went ahead to notify it now i placed the back of my fabric that is the wrong side of my fabric on the table the wrong side is on the table while the right side is facing me and i'm going to take the wrong side of the front my front piece and then i'm going to place it on my crepe remember the wrong side of my front piece is facing the right side of my crepe now i'm going to trace out the the neckline now after doing this i'm going to go ahead and trim the shoulder so this is what my crepe looks like after i've cut out the neckline i'm going to go ahead and place it on the front fabric to make sure that the neck is matching how i want it to match now i'm going to go back i'm going to get back to this and um, what i'm going to do first is to um, mark out my curve i wanted to use this but it's not every time that you'll be using a curve ruler i'm just going to go ahead and use my free hand to sketch it out yeah this gave me a perfect curve and then if i was working on that design on my thumbnail 
this is what i would have done i'm going to come to the shoulder line and then divide it by two and then i'm going to go down two inches from the next line which is 10 inches and then i'm also going to now use a straight line to connect it down to 10 inches and then come down again now because this my um this my crepe is small that is why i'm not going to be doing this design but yeah if i had more fabric that is what i would have done to achieve that um design that you saw on my thumbnail so after i've cut out the curve i'm going to go ahead and clean this out and yeah this is what we have the next thing we want to do is to hem the edges of this um crepe we're just going to go ahead and iron it by half inch and then use our hemming gum to hold it down so after you've ironed it this is what you're having all smooth and nice you've used your hemming gum to hold it and everything is looking steady you're going to get your front fabric and then you're also going to get your crepe now lay your crepe wrong side on the table and then lay your your front fabric wrong side on the crepe and then sew then after sewing you're going to turn it over so yeah we've gone ahead to sew it now you're going to go ahead and add notches to especially the deep v part just go ahead and add your notches all the way around so that when you turn it over you're going to be having um, a smooth finish so I'm adding notches everywhere that I know that I have, I need notches, all the edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip the crepe over. And so now the next thing I need to do is to iron. Now it's time to work on the back pattern. The back pattern i'll be using a facing for it so i'm going to firstly fold my back pattern into two and then i'm going to get my facing and i'm also going to fold it into two just get a sizable facing um i did not um show the measurement here because i just picked out something that i know would be enough for me so i just um folded the fabric and the facing and then i laid the both of them in such a way that i can trace out the shoulder line and the neckline so that is what i'm doing right now i'm tracing out the shoulder and i'm also tracing out the neckline so yeah i've cut it off and i'm sure that it's matching now the next thing i'm going to do is to go ahead and curve it out yeah just watch me do this and just replicate what i'm doing So after I've drawn this, I'm just going to go ahead and curve it out. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to show you guys the measurement I used. At the shoulder, what I have left is 5 inches. And then at the other side, I have about 4.5 inches. Now when I open it up, this is what I have. I'm going to go ahead and use my weaving machine to hem the bottom part or you can also use a bias to hem it or yeah just do whatever thing that works best for you get your back pattern place them right side facing each other and sew so after sewing this is what i have make sure you iron it after you've added your notch to it so the next thing we're going to do is to get our front fabric our front pattern lay the front pattern and the back pattern right side facing each other then use your facing to cover up the front pattern and then you're going to join the shoulder now this is what i mean get your front pattern place it on the back pattern use the facing to cover up the front pattern and then you're going to join the shoulder now after joining the shoulder 
um, which you can see the facing is flying away so just go ahead and use your hemming gum to lay it down that is after you've hemmed the bottom of, bottom of the facing and then the next thing i'm going to do is to close the sides all the way to the point that you notched which is the neck the waistline just close it all the way to that point and then you're going to add your pockets i do not have a detailed tutorial of the pocket here I, I believe that i've done this a lot in my previous videos but in case you do not know if you want me to make a separate pocket video just indicate on the comment section so these are my pocket linings i'm going to go ahead and add it in the way that i'm showing you after which i'm going to join my pockets together and then i'll close up the remaining of my gown now this is it this is my pocket i've already added it this is the opening that i need to close up i'm going to go ahead and use my half inch allowance to close it up and then i'm going to hem the bottom of my dress and also the sleeve so my dress is almost ready i've hemmed um, the bottom of my dress i hemmed it by one inch times two and i used my hemming gum to hold it down and also to thicken it yeah the hemming gum gives you that effect i also did the same thing for the sleeve i folded it by one inch into two and i used my hemming gum to hold it down and i'm going to run a stitch on top of it now my dress is ready before i show you guys let's go ahead and do the design and the stoning design in the I have on the first thing I'm going to be doing is to mark out my stoning lines if you know whatever design that you know that you want just go ahead and use your chalk or your pencil or whatever thing that you use use it to trace out the lines where you need your stones to be placed this will be easier for you it's easier done this way so I'm just going to go ahead and then use um, and mark out the the lines that where my my stones are going to be i'm not marking them in any particular order at the beginning it seems like i'm marking them in a particular order but no as i advance into um, this marking you're going to notice that i'm not marking them in any particular order but i'm just doing what i feel like it will work for me so just go ahead and do whatever thing that will work for you. Continue doing it until you get to the edge. Whatever design, you could draw a butterfly. You could draw whatever thing that you want to draw. Just go ahead and mark it out before you begin to, to place your stones. And I believe that if you're watching this video up to this point and, that, and you're not yet a subscriber, I do not know what you're waiting for, but this is me pleading with you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Also turn on your post notification bell so that whenever I post, you'll be notified. So now I've started placing my stones. As you can see, I've done the first one. I'm just going to go ahead and also do the second one. I got a bigger stone and I placed it in the center. And I'm, also, I'm now going to use a medium-sized stone to place all around that big size. I'm making a kind of a ball. So I'm going to place the medium-sized stones all around it. Now this ball is going to be on the joint of all these connecting lines. By joint, I mean, you should know what I mean by joint. So wherever the um, lines are joining, it's going to carry a ball. Then the other places, which are the, the lines itself, are going to have um, straight line stones. Then wherever the lines join, I'm going to be making a ball. Now, I've already made um, three balls for three joints. So by this explanation, I already hope that you understood what I'm saying. And at this other joint, I'm going to be making another ball, which is four balls for four joints. Now, after placing these um, stones down, these stones can be tricky, so you need to place them down carefully. Now, after placing them, I'm going to get a fabric, a very light fabric, and then cover it up. 
and iron. I do not want to iron this directly to my fabric, which is why I'm using um, a fabric to cover up my stones. Please, when you cover, always make sure that you're not shaking your hands, your hands are steady, so that your stones will not move away from the position that you've put them. Go ahead and use your steam iron to iron because um, when you're ironing your stone, you really need steam. In case your iron is not a steam iron, then make sure that you get water and then you sprinkle it on it. It helps your, your stone to hold. It helps the gum to also melt very well. So go ahead and iron these very well. Make sure that you iron them until the glue is properly held. Then you're not, you're not going to go ahead and arrange stones on every line. On every line that I have here, I'm going to arrange stones on them. Now this is what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and continue doing it for the others. Now this is actually not easy. Don't wait until you've arranged a lot of stone before you iron. No, you could you could arrange one and then iron and that. It's even easier that way. That way your stone will remain steady and fine. So yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful. And I hope that you already understand this stoning process. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this tutorial, also tell me a thank you in the comments section. And yeah, this is what my dress looks like. I look like a rich auntie. Yummy mommy of one. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next one. Bye. I love you. And let me continue to do my chakra. <laughs>